You might be familiar with halftone patterns being used in traditional printing pieces like newspapers and screen printing. And while they're essential for those mediums, halftones can also provide a very unique artwork style. Commonly used in comic books, halftone patterns represent nostalgia for the past in this digital age. Welcome to this Tats Plus tutorial, how to make halftone effects pattern and brushes in Photoshop and Illustrator. Halftone is a technique that simulates tone gradations by using dots and these vary in size, spacing, and sometimes even shapes to generate a halftone gradient effect. The closer and bigger the dots on the pattern, the darker the image is. The opposite is for lighter areas, the dots are smaller and more spread out. When it is all put together, the halftone effect creates the illusion of gradation when seen from afar. All you need for this tutorial is this headphones image. You can get the link from the description down below to download it from the Envato Elements website, and we're ready to dive in. Locate the headphones image on your computer and drag it into Photoshop. We will convert this image into a variation of halftone images to try different settings. Head over to the menu bar and select Filter, Pixelate, Color Halftone. On the Color Halftone option window, you will notice the Max Radius and Channels options. The maximum radius dictates the maximum size of the dots. The four channels represent cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and the angle these dots will be mixed in. So let's leave this as the default settings and click OK. I'll zoom in here and you can see that we have created a pattern of small little dots that put together and looked from afar seem like there's nothing there. So press Command Z to go back a step and let's try this with different settings. Head over to the menu bar, select Filter, Pixelate, Color Half Tone. And this time, set the maximum radius to 20. Click OK. So let's zoom in here and you can see that the dots are a little bit bigger and you can see the CMYK pattern scattered more. And from afar, you can notice the dots a lot more. So press Command Z to go back a step and let's try a different setting again. So go to the menu bar, select Filter, Pixelate, Color Half Tone. Now let's leave the maximum radius to 20 pixels and set the channels to 45 uh, degree angles to, for all of them and click OK. Now you will notice that the dots are the same size as before, but the angles are now lined up on a grid, creating a very neat pattern. So all the colors are on top of each other and that means that we can see less and less of the colors. Press Command Z to go back a step, and now we will take a look at how to achieve the halftone pattern effect through the bitmap option. For that, we need to convert the image into a grayscale image. So head over to Image, Mode, Grayscale, and on the warning window, click on this card. And now we have a grayscale image. Head over to Image, Mode, Bitmap, and here on the bitmap option window, select the output to 72. And under method, use halftone screen and click OK. Set the frequency lines to 3 lines per inch, angle to 45 degrees, and set the shape to round. Click OK. Let's zoom in here and you can see that now this is more of a cookie cutter effect because the edge of the headphones are not dispersed dots. It's more like it, somebody went with a cookie cutter and cut the image out. Press Command Z and let's try a different setting. Head over to the menu bar, select Image, Mode, Bitmap. Let's keep the same settings here, click OK. And now let's leave this the same as well. Set the shape to Line and click OK. Let's zoom in here. You can see that now instead of dots, we have lines. And by the traditional definition, this is not really a halftone effect, but it has the same idea behind it. And that's how you can create a halftone pattern in Photoshop. Now let's close this file and go to File, New. Name the file Halftone Brush. Set the width and height to 1500 pixels and click on Create. On the toolbar, select the Brush tool. 
right click on the document to open the brushes option and open the general brushes folder. Select the hard round brush. Let's set the hardness to 25% and the size to 500 pixels. Set the foreground color to black. Click once on the document to create one brush stroke. Head over to the menu bar, select filter, pixelate, color half tone, and we'll keep the same settings as before, max radius to 20 and channels to 45. Click OK, and now go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and on the Brush Name option window, set the name to Halftone Brush, and click OK. And now you can use the brush as a regular brush. I'll create here a new layer, so we can use the brush. And you can increase and decrease the size on your keyboard by pressing opening and closing brackets. You can also change the brush settings, and this will give you a bigger range for you to work with. So head over to Window, Brush Settings, to open the Brush Settings panel. And here, let's change a few things. Change the spacing to 50%, and this will give you more spacing between the brush stroke. And here, we can change it back to 1%, and this will give you a more continuous look. So you can play around with these settings to get more options. And this is how you create halftone Photoshop brushes. Now let's take a look at how to create something similar in Adobe Illustrator. Open Adobe Illustrator and let's create a new file. Name the file halftone brush. Let's use a letter size paper in centimeters and set the orientation to landscape and click create. Select the ellipse tool from the toolbar and click on the document. Set the width and height to one centimeter, click OK. We can change the fill color here or open the color panel by going to window, color, and change the fill color to black and no stroke. Let's move this down here. Select the ellipse tool one more time, click on the artboard, and now set the width and height to 0.3 centimeters. Select both circles and head over to Window Align to open the Align panel. And press Horizontal Align Center, so we have both circles aligned now. Let's zoom in, and now from the toolbar, click on the blend tool or W on your keyboard and click on one circle and then the next. The blend tool will fill the gap between the two objects by creating a number of steps. And you can still alter this by selecting A for the direct selection tool and moving uh, either of the circles. Now if you want to change the number of steps, double click on the blend tool on the toolbar, check on preview, set the spacing to specified steps, and here you can change the amount of steps you want to have in between the gap. Let's set ours to nine and click OK. Press A for the direct selection tool and maybe let's move this a little bit lower. So that way the circles are not touching at the top but they're touching at the bottom. Now we're going to turn this composition into a grouped object. So head over to object, expand, on the Expand option window, select Object and Fill and click OK. Now each circle is a separate object. You can press A and move any circle uh, as you wish. Let's move this here and press Shift option and drag towards the right. Select the Blend tool from the toolbar and let's click on the left group and now on the right group. And this will create a series of steps in between these two groups. Head over to Object, Expand so we can spend all of the shapes. Click OK. In order to create a brush, we need to create a tile that is able to multiply. So using the rectangle tool from the toolbar or M on your keyboard, here I'll change the color of mine to cyan so you can see the square. So here from the center to the center of the other circles. You can get help by using the Smart Guides. Head over to View, Smart Guides, 
and that will help you center the square. Select the square in all of the shapes, head over to Object, Clipping Mask, and Make or Command 7 on your keyboard. And now we've created a clipping mask. Let's select this, press Shift and scale it down. Press Shift Option and let's multiply this five times to create a brush. Close the color panel, head over to Window, Brushes to open the Brushes panel and here we have all of our brushes. Drag the composition into the Brushes panel, select Art Brush, click OK. On the Art Brush options, name the brush Halftone Brush. Set the Brush Scale option to Stretch to Fit Stroke Length. Set the method to None and click OK. And now we have a Halftone Brush. I will delete these so we can focus on the brush that we have created. I'll move this out of the way so we can try to see if it works. Select the Pen tool from the toolbar. And let's create a curve. Let's set the stroke color. And now let's select our brush. We can change the thickness with a stroke. So head over to Window, Stroke, and here we can change the weight to an appropriate weight so it doesn't feel like the stroke has uh, stretched. Now you can notice here that we can only set the brush stroke to black, we can't change the color. So to change that, open the brushes panel, double click on the brush, set the colorization method to hue shift, and click OK. On the warning window, click leave strokes. Let's move this here to the side. Select the ellipse tool from the toolbar or L on your keyboard and draw a circle. Set the fill color to cyan. Set the fill color to cyan. Select the pen tool from the toolbar and draw a curve on the bottom left quadrant portion of the circle. Set the stroke color to cyan. Select the curve and select the brush that we just created. And now you can see that we are able to add color to it. So let's add a, a darker color. This is to create a shadow. This is a cool way to add some texture to your illustrations. Select the curve. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We need to bring the brush stroke to the back. So press Shift Option and Closing Bracket. Select both objects and press command 7 to create a clipping mask. Select the circle again and now select the fill color to cyan. To edit, you can double click on the circle and there we can change the stroke color again. You can also create another uh, stroke in the same clipping mask. Double click, press option, move it towards the top right. R to rotate, rotate it, and now we can create a highlight. So we have a highlight at the top and a shadow at the bottom. Great, and there you have it. This is how to make halftone effects pattern and brushes in Photoshop and Illustrator. From all of us here at Envato Tats Plus, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you on the next one.